What's up guys? Day 30. We have made it 30 days. Think about, look back and see all the differences that have been made in your personal life just by praying. I know I've made some differences in my own. Hair is definitely different. I'm about to wash it so it looks crazy right now. But I mean, just notice all the little differences and changes that were made just in 30 days. Um, I have my Bible with me. We're at it. Ooh. And today we're going to talk about hope. Um, and I'm more inspired to talk about hope because um, I was looking at TikTok real quick. And a guy basically said that when people say time heals all wounds and he said that's cap meaning that's a lie um and he's right time does not heal all wounds god does and you will be surprised how many of us i mean it's just time time is a precious gift sorry my dogs are right here time is such a precious gift and god has given it to us every day when we wake up and there's breath in our body and we're we have healthy limbs and um, yeah, it's such a, it's such a blessing. Time is a blessing, but time doesn't really heal. God heals. And because God heals, God can restore time. Okay. He can restore time that may have, that you may feel that you have lost, um, healing from a particular relationship or, uh, you know, healing time in terms of maybe time that you may have spent in bondage with unforgiveness or bitterness or restore time. And maybe you were under infirmity, um, <clears throat> maybe just time that, um, you may have been doing stuff you ain't gonna miss doing. So he restores time and he'll restore it in such a way that it will seem like that you have all the time in the world. And sometimes we look at it in a way, Johnny, sometimes we look at it in a way that says, man, I spent all this time. I've blown all this time. No, think about it like this. What have I learned in that time frame? Um, I was actually just talking to my brother about this because, um, you know, I said, don't look at it as like, you know, he's only 25. And, you know, he's like, you know, I've just spent all this time doing this, that, and this. And I told him up front, I said, look at it like this. What did you learn over the last six to seven years? What did you learn? And that's what really counts is what you learned in that pro in, in that space. Um, and that's something that's just so important for all of us. Um, it's not morning. But hopefully got up and read and memorized Psalm 5. But we are going to read Psalms 91. Because it's so important that we pray to God and ask him to protect us from any, any type of demonic attack or any type of demonic pestilence. So important. So, so important. Psalms 91 reads as this. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to help thee in all thy ways. <clears throat> they that bear up, they, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. God is so good, let me tell you. So we're going to do something different. 
I'm actually going to read Jeremiah 29, 11, because it is a very popular scripture. Read it according to the King James Version. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. All right, so one thing um, we're going to look, we're going to utilize our references. Because sometimes when you look that thing up online, sometimes it's not always accurate. So we really want to get an accurate account of the topic of hope according to the concordance. I got one back here. My hands are a little dry and ashy. And then I won't be on here long because I do have a couple of meetings that I have to attend to. Um, do, 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 do. Jeremiah 32, 6-15. And I'll read one more. Back to Jeremiah 32, 6-15. Uh, 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 uh. All right, Jeremiah 32, 6 through 15 reads as this. And Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, Hanamel, the son of Shalom, thine uncle shall come unto thee, saying, Buy thee my field that is in Anathoth, for the right of redemption is thine to buy it. So Hanamel my uncle came uncle's son came to me in the court of the prison according to the word of the lord and said unto me and said unto me by my field i pray thee that is an anathoth which is in the country of benjamin for the right of inheritance is thine and the redemption is thine buy it for thyself then i knew that this was the word of the lord and i bought the field of hanamel my uncle's son that was in Anathoth and weighed him the money, even 17 shekels of silver. And I subscribed the evidence and sealed it and took witness and weighed him and the money and the balances. So I took the evidence of the purchase, both that which was sealed according to the law and custom and that which was open. And I gave the evidence of purchase to Baruch, the son of Neriah, the son of Messiah, in the sight of Hanamel, my uncle's son, and in the presence of witnesses that subscribed the book of the purchase before all the Jews that sat in the court of prison. And I charged, let me make sure I'm reading the right thing, Jeremiah 32, 6 15. And I charged Baruch before them, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, take these evidences, the evidence of the purchase, both which is sealed, and this evidence which is open, and put them in an earthen vessel, for they may continue many days. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. That was Jeremiah 6 through 15. And the commentary, commentary says, Buy the field. During Jeremiah's confinement, God instructed him to buy a field in his hometown village of Anathoth, a place already controlled by Babylonian forces. While it may have seemed foolish to buy land that was already in enemy hands, the act, this act served as an important living example. By purchasing the land, Jeremiah showed faith in God's promise that some of the people would return and buy and again buy land and build houses. This was a prophetic sign of hope despite Judah's present desperate situation. In a similar way, our situations may at times seem hopeless, but if we belong to God, we have the promise and the hope of, of a better future. Now, well, let's go ahead and read Romans 8.28. And we know what that one is because that's another popular scripture. Do, 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 
do, do, do, do, do. And Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Commentary for that says, it's pretty long, bear with me. It says this passage should be a great encouragement to God's children when they must endure suffering in this life. Concerning his faithful people, God will bring will bring good out of all difficulties, troubles, persecution, and suffering. The highest good, the highest good is that we will better relate and become more like Jesus Christ, which will finally lead to sharing in his glory. This promise is limited to those who love God and have submitted to him through faith in Christ. The all things do not necessarily include our sins and spiritual negligence. No one can excuse sin by claiming that God will work it out for good. For that matter, we often will experience the temporary consequences of those sins even after confessing them to God and receiving forgiveness. Yet, if we confess and truly turn from our offenses against God, he will still work out our highest purposes in our lives no matter what our failures are. That's good news. That's real good news. Now Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, for the evidence of things not seen. And the commentary for that is, Chapter 11 gives evidence that true enduring faith involves trusting God in all circumstances. This trust enables the believer to remain loyal to God and his word at all times. Faith takes God at his word and relies completely on his promises. It does not base its hope on visible circumstances, but on confidence in spiritual realities. Such a faith enables us to have right relationship with God. It causes us to pursue a deeper relationship with God, trust his goodness, and have full confidence in his word. Faith obeys his commands and guides us so that we come to base our lives on his promises. Reject the evil ways of the present world and pursue a heavenly home. It teaches us to endure great challenges and difficulties, inspire faith in future generations, refuse to indulge in sin's pleasures, endure persecution, perform mighty works and miracles in God's power for his honor, and also suffer for God. Faith says we will not return to the useless and ungodly ways of the world. So I read all those commentaries because we it's so important that we understand it based off of how the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and speaking through you with that word. Um, and the biggest takeaway, it doesn't matter who gets online and says that they will, you know, let's form a group together to pray for our future spouses. Let's get a group together to help with addiction. Let's get, the, let's get, and they, they can say, they could throw Christian in front of it and Let's get together and let's talk about our finances and let's get together. And none of that stuff matters unless it centers its programming based on the word of God, encouraging you to get closer to God. And the one surefire way to get closer to God is to understand wrong was done. And moving those things out the way through repentance. Now, as the word says, sometimes we do have to we do have to endure patiently meaning that you don't complain about it meaning that you recognize that you were wrong in some areas don't complain about it don't get mad about it but patiently like wait well while you are enduring learn some lessons while you're enduring and ultimately get that gunk out and put god first like fixing your focus on jesus and re- and I mean like not even not even just doing it every day or oh, I get up every morning oh, I'm gonna do it then and just going about your day after that thinking that you did a duty. No, focusing and delighting yourself in the ways of, of God is every day. The word says day and night. We have to meditate on it. Loosely translate, find it. But it says that we have to focus on this thing every single moment of our being because Philippians says four says that we four eight says that we had to focus on things let me go to it Mm 
Hmm. Huh. Man. Oh, that's another. I was reading something. That's a whole nother. Whole nother day. Who we'll wanna read it? Oh, I did pass it. I did. <laughs> and Philippians 4. Well, it will start at 6. It's, well, we're going to go back to 4. It says here, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto men. The Lord is, the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything but prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen me do, do in the do and the God of peace shall be with you. Um, so that is important because it's a reminder that you should just be thinking about the things of God every day, every night. And you'll know that your mind has shifted because the some things that you'll see, whether it be in the church or out in the world, and you know that it's not right, you know, the Holy Ghost will be speaking to you in that and you'll feel really you'll feel deeply moved you'll feel sorrowful sorrowful um as a result of some of the things that are happening but ultimately for example um there i have seen on um i don't know there's that i've seen one woman um who she makes it very known that she took the biblical and godly approach um to wait on her husband yes okay that and that you know i had i know somebody personally who took the godly approach um to um get a husband however it's so important that these principles and she you know this young lady displays her husband all the time which is which is totally fine um but ultimately such groups should ultimately teach you to Put God first. Put God first. Focus on him. And I'm not just talking about just focus on him between the hours of six and eight. I'm talking about focus on him between the time you open up your eyes and close your eyes. That is a regular thing. Regular, regular thing. And it's so important to know God's word also. Definitely take some time to study God's word. Um, I will connect the link to where I have gotten a, a Bible study plan. I'm reading it in chronological order. I have read it in the standard order, um, which is Genesis through Reve Revelations. But um, this time I'm reading it through Genesis and it'll cut into Job and then it'll come back to Genesis. Um, and then it parallels Chronicles and Kings. Um, because you'll find that a good chunk or, or, or portions of the Old Testament, you know, basically is accounted for in another part of the Old Testament, another chapter. Um, and that goes the same thing for realizing that not only did King Solomon write Proverbs, but he also wrote Song of Songs uh, or Songs of Solomon, uh, which is basically a, a love story. And it talks about sex. Sorry, yes, I have on shorts. And it talks about sex in that book. Um, and ultimately, we have to be careful, all of us, including me, we have to be careful in individuals that hop online and they promise this and they promise that and they say this and say that. What about just getting into the word for yourself? And the best thing that I have personally done, two things, was decide to read the Bible in chronological order and decide to read the Bible reading this fire bible but also reading it in the king james version um because the king james version has words and phrases and statements in it that may not be in another version you can parallel with another version um if you understand it better but you definitely don't want to study from it um for me king james new king james and NIV and that's really a CSB excuse me that's another version that I sometimes study as well um but 
Um, ultimately, we have to, while we're hoping for that thing, I'm hoping for my husband. Um, I'm hoping for true love, you know, and I, be and I believe it's going to be a wonderful thing that, that is straight from God, um, uh, because he, he definitely knows the desires of my heart and I'm so excited for your husband or your wife or the children that you want to birth or the business you want to birth, um, or the degree you're trying to finish. Um, I believe that godly hope for you. Um, and it's so important. Um, I believe in that hope for you and I hope for you because I pray that you're able to find the opportunity to redirect your focus and put your eyes on God and really focus on him even during the even as you're going through and even as you're waiting patiently like going to god to the throne of grace to really pray um for that breakthrough because it's coming my mom used to say it all the time it's coming pat it's coming and you know it definitely resonates that statement that she will always tell me resonates now um now that she has went on to be with the lord um that it's coming it's coming. And my mom always firmly believed in that statement that it's coming. And so I pray that it's coming for you. Get into what God says about waiting well and hope. Really study and really understand what that means and really just putting your focus on God and just trusting and leaning on him for your strength, right? Let me tell you something. God is so good. God is so good. Hey, we're going to go ahead and pray. Looks like it's about to storm. That means no computer time. Let's go. Father God in heaven, I thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning, Lord. Thank you for getting me started on my way, Lord. Thank you for placing me in my right mind, Lord. Thank you for the gift of today, Lord. Thank you for the gift of time because, Lord, you are timeless, Lord. You are all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing. You're omnipotent and omnipresent. You're there and here and everywhere, and there is no way that I can escape you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that you're always with me, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Decrease my flesh. Decrease my flesh so I can meet you where you are, Holy Ghost, because you are everywhere. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Forgive us of all of our sins, Lord, both known and unknown. Forgive us for complaining. Forgive us for doubting. Forgive us of idolizing those two things of complaining and doubt. And unforgiveness, Lord, and bitterness, Lord. Forgive us of those things, Lord. We take those things out of our hearts and out of our minds right now. We bind that up right now, Lord, and we throw it into the lake of fire in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we lose peace, understanding, patience, hope, focusing on things that, that make us thankful, that want to make us thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name, Lord. And Lord, I hope for I hope for that husband, not only for me, but for those that are listening to the sound of my voice. I hope for that financial breakthrough for not only me, but for those that are listening to the sound of my voice. I hope for that business to bloom and blossom way beyond giving us an Ephesians 320 blessing over our businesses, Lord. Above and beyond what more that we could ever expect and ask for, Lord. We pray that for me. We pray that for anybody else that is listening to the sound of my voice. We have hope and healing, Lord. We have hope and healing from every stripe, Lord, that was bore, Lord. Lord, we pray healing that the healing heavens would open up right now for anyone that is listening to the sound of my voice or anyone that is listening to the sound of my voice, knowing that they may be in need of healing, whether it be physical, spiritual, mental, occupational healing. Lord, we pray, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, that we call those things healed right now, Lord, that cancer has no house, has no room there, that 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 diabetes and, and heart attacks and, and, and heart cardiovascular disease has no room in any, in any of these godly vessels that you have created for us, Lord. Lord, we ask that the angels will remain encamped around us according to your word in Psalms 91, that they will be encamped around us to protect us in our cars, on our trains, on our buses, on our bikes, on our planes, any mode of travel, Lord, to anyone that is listening to the sound of my voice, Lord. We pray that, that, that individuals that are listening, Lord, that they are protected, Lord, we are, we pray that individuals are at the right place at the wrong, at the right time, Lord, and that nobody that is listening to the sound of my voice is at the wrong place at the wrong time, Lord. We pray, Holy Ghost, that you speak peacefully to that individual, telling them that it's time to move or time to shift or time to relocate, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your name, Lord. We thank you for 
for biblical hope, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we don't hope in the world, Lord. We don't hope in things. We don't hope in material things, Lord, because those things cannot save us, Lord. You are the only one that saves us, Lord. You are the provider. You are the way maker. You are the righteous one. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for being our strong tower. Thank you, Lord, for being our protector. It is these things that we ask for in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Figure out hop off here real quick because it's getting real dark real quick, okay? So I pray you guys have a wonderful day. We are going to keep praying, going to keep praying. We're going to keep on contending. We're going to keep on beating down that rock. We're going to keep beating down these strongholds. We're going to keep on going because kingdom of heaven, all right? Praying that all of us are growing in our relationship. And yeah, you guys have a great day. Love you.